Well, I first heard about the uh, Horse Plus Humane Society about a year ago when I was taking a photography course and I had to uh, do a project that was like picturesque and I had heard about this shelter and thought it was interesting. Uh, I personally haven't had a whole lot of experience with horses but I uh, love animals and I um, really love to support uh, shelters that take care of animals. So after the photography course, I um, about a year later took a um, video field production class and again I uh, wanted to do a documentary on the shelter. Um, I'm following uh, this particular group because they are so hands-on and um, so involved in the rescue of horses from the slaughterhouse pipeline that they really give you a good uh, look and representation of what is going on with the slaughterhouse pipeline. Slaughter pipeline is a, a chain of events for horses that when their owner no longer wants them, they'll be sh sold to a killer buyer or something, they'll go to an auction, and then they'll get shipped to Mexico. And the whole thing is a horrible, horrible um, thing that, that these horses go through. Their, their eyes are gouged out sometimes. Their, um, I've even seen parts pictures where horses' legs have been actually snapped off. Um, and, you know, just to get them to the slaughterhouse where they can be slaughtered for human consumption. And it's a horrible, horrible process the whole entire time for the horse. You know, we don't want that for our pets. You know, these animals are not raised for human consumption. They're raised for pets and for, you know, pleasure riding, trail riding, all this stuff that, you know, they're not intended for human consumption. In California in 97, it became a law that you cannot ship horses or sell horses for human consumption in California. There were slaughterhouses for horses in California and when that happened, you know, it all left. And that should have taken care of the killer buyers coming and buying horses, deceiving people, you know, all oh, these horses from my backyard and they're going to ship them to slaughter. So that law should have taken care of all that. But the problem is no one enforces that law. You know, there was um, one horse that it just, it totally was um, just heart-wrenching to, to see this horse. We were getting horses from this killer buyer. And this one horse, we named him Dano. And when all the horses loaded out, the killer buyer was trying to, trying to get him out and he couldn't get up. And... So he put a rope on his neck and, and drug him out of the trailer and he kind of just fell down and it was, it was just heart-wrenching to see because he, his hooves were so long and overgrown and one of his legs was, had been broken and it healed crooked and so the, the poor horse, I mean I can't imagine the, the type of pain that he was in. And he, he managed to get up and, and walk away and you know, it was, it was hard for everyone to keep it together until he left. Um, and then little Dano, he laid back down and his hooves were, were so long and you could tell that he had been suffering in this, in this manner for who knows how long. He laid down there and, and just, you know, I, he was just done. And all we were able to do for him was to give him food and pet him and you know, it was just, it was so hard to see a young horse, he was only like two, and to imagine the suffering that he had gone through, and just to get with us at the end, and maybe had like 15 minutes with us just petting him and rubbing him, and, and he was gone. Don't. Don't. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And that was, that was probably one of the hardest horses that, that came to us is just, you know, he was such a young horse, he'd been through so much pain and suffering, and then just to be with us in the end, which it was the greatest gift that we could have, he could have had, is to know at the end that someone cared. Because up to that point, I mean, all he would have known from humans was pain and suffering. 
there's a lot of uh, stuff going on here that uh, not many people really understand or know what's going on and the word needs to get out that these horses are still um, able to live a productive and healthy life and make um, people happy um, to be there to have them as pets and um, these horses deserve um, a good end to their life instead of where they um, would have ended up had um, the shelter not rescued them. The documentary I'm working on is uh, focusing on the Slaughterhouse Pipeline, what it is. Uh, it's trying to educate and inform the public about um, the laws and the lack of regulation. Um, trying to show that the way this process is working is not um, the most beneficial. Um, it's terrible for the horses. It's a very cruel process on the way to the uh, slaughterhouse. Um, and it ends up on people's plates when um, it's not necessarily um, healthy for the people. You know, so many horses suffer so much. And a lot of times horses that come to the shelter, we're able to, to fix them and love them and, and know that they're safe. And for Dano, it was just... Um, just a little bit of saying, you know, we're here and everything's safe. 